in just six days. I'm your host, Steve Van Meter, and thanks for joining me today. In our show today, something huge is about to happen. And as you're about to see, the U.S. dollar is in danger. Now, let's head over to Reuters. We picked today's story up with a headline at the BRICS summit. Russia is to push the end of dollar dominance, and that is the beginning stages of the potential end of the dollar being the global reserve currency. And this has serious implications for the U.S. economy because right now the world trades on dollars. But if Russia has its way, the dollar will no longer be the dominant reserve currency. And Russia is seeking to convince BRICS countries to build an alternative platform for international payments that would be immune to Western sanctions when it hosts the group's leaders at a summit next week. And I want you to understand the importance of this because the major news outlets aren't picking this story up, but Russia is pushing in a big way. President Vladimir Putin is keen to build up BRICS, which has expanded to include Egypt, Ethiopia, Iran, and the United Arab Emirates, as well as Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa as a powerful counterweight to the West in global politics and trade. And one of the reasons they want to do this is because the United States can shut down global trade by restricting access to the dollar. And this is an issue because the world trades on dollars right now. So you can see what Russia is trying to do is undermine the West in a big way. And if they're successful, that could take the dollar away as a global reserve currency. And along with it, the American way of life. Central to that is a proposal for a new payment system based on a network of commercial banks linked to each other through the BRICS central banks. And currently, this is done through the SWIFT financial system. And this is how dollars get moved all around the world. Russia wants to build their own system similar to that, which would then use a new currency. And the system would use blockchain technology to store and transfer digital tokens backed by national currencies. This, in turn, would allow those currencies to be easily and securely exchanged, bypassing the need for dollar transactions. Now, what's interesting here, if you wonder just how used the dollar is in global transactions, well, 88% of all foreign currency transactions are done in dollars. That's how big it is and how important it is in the global economy. Russia sees this as a way to resolve increasing problems in settling trade payments, even with friendly countries such as China, where local banks fear they could be hit by secondary sanctions by the United States. The founder of BRICS Analytics Think Tank said the creation of such a system was technically feasible, but would take time. And while that's always the answer, a lot of people don't understand why is a dollar so dominant? Why is it used in global trade? Well, one of the big reasons is the United States is the world's largest importer. And well, we only pay our bills in dollars. So you think about it, when a ship comes ashore and gets unloaded, we don't pay in yuan, we don't pay in euros, we pay in dollars, meaning they've got to take those dollars and convert them into whatever currency they want to use. But the bigger issue here is why people said, how come the dollar has reigned so strong for so long? It's because there is no alternative system. There is no other currency that can take its place. And even if somebody came up with one, there isn't the transition network. There isn't the infrastructure to make it widely available to use. And this is what Russia is saying now is, hey, we want to do this. The problem is it is feasible, but it's going to take time. And one of the issues recently we see with the dollar is this recent spike here. Now, many of people have been saying this has something to do with the Fed. Other people have been saying this has to do with the fact that former President Trump is likely to take the White House again and is going to all of a sudden issue a bunch of tariffs. And that's going to drive the dollar higher here. But when we look at what the issue Russia and other countries have, it is the dollar. And it's the strength of the dollar because they need dollars in a big way. And when you see a rally here, as we're looking at the nominal broad U.S. dollar index, it suggests that one of two things, either the demand for dollars is increasing in a material way, which at the moment we don't have a lot of evidence of, or that the financial system, particularly the global financial system, is running out of dollars and there's a need for them. Of course, there's the alternative view here, and that is there is a crisis impending and there is a flight to cash and safety. We're not seeing that either. As we turn to Morgan Stanley's Wilson, who says a strong dollar, 
all it threatens the stock rally we're going to take a look at that but what he notes is he sees economic shock or curtailed liquidity made her equities and that is true when we see an economic shock or we see something like a liquidity crisis what happens is a lot of businesses and companies and traders who are using margin well they get called on that it means they need cash well if you don't have cash because you're in a liquidity crisis where there's a shortage of cash how do you get it well through forced liquidation that means the dollar goes up in value equity prices go down in value but at the moment stocks have recently recorded their 46th all-time closing highs of 2024 on monday as investors geared up for the latest round of corporate earnings and one of the things that could slow down the rally again according to wilson one of morgan stanley's top analysts would be a strengthening dollar. But if you're looking to set new closing highs on your trading account, we'll look no further. Check this train out that we put back just about a month ago on Uranium. And how did we know this was going to be such a profitable trade? Well, we did a back test and I noted to our subscribers that the back test shows us as a high probability trade. As of close of business yesterday, it's up 16.67%. Today, at time of filming, it was up over 7% on top of that. Could you imagine getting Getting a trade like that well we're going to make it even easier our development team right now is taking that back tested data we're going to add a new page to the report to show all of our high probability trades you want to trade and have a high degree of success look no further jump on our reports our cta time pro we trade against the machines and we use back tested data we use historical data to beat them you get the daily report you get the signals i go through every trade give you my opinions on which ones you should look at we give you stop loss levels we track all the trades returns we give you an update every week on the trades and stop losses it's fully duplicatable 30-day free trial links in the description below again you want to start making money trading this is the answer we put the probabilities in your favor but let's talk about the probabilities of a market correction here due to the rising dollar we have to go back to the global financial crisis and what happened there was a liquidity crunch it set the dollar soaring and sure enough that sent equity prices crumbling but how about we move into 2015 2016 we see there was a long stretch of a dollar rally but it really didn't impact the equity markets until the later stage here and then it set equity prices going largely flat over a couple of years it's not until we we get closer to 2019 we see a dollar rally sent equities lower of course the pandemic is obvious huge liquidity crunch stock market correction there but then we get into 2022 we see a dollar rally leading to weaker equity prices and then we see some other instances here around 2023 and right now wilson's saying hey wait a minute this dollar rally could be a problem but as you can look back there's been plenty of dollar rallies over since 2007 and it doesn't necessarily have a major impact on equity prices but when we understand why we're facing the liquidity crisis it has everything to do with the underlying fundamentals of our financial system we're going to look at that in a moment here because of bloomberg's dollar index a gauge of the currency's relative strength versus its peers has gained about two percent since the beginning of october as investors pair back bets on the pace at which the federal reserve will cut interest rates going forward and the idea here is because the fed cuts rates that suddenly it magically eases financial conditions but that's not exactly how it works there's no evidence that says that the fed raises or even lowers the funds rate that something actually happens the very next day now again some people are saying former president trump's going to retake the white house win the election and when he does that he's going to add new tariffs and that's what the market's pricing in here again this is just the news reacting to the rapid move of the dollar but the reality is we are indeed facing a liquidity crunch because we know the system is running short on dollars now how do we know that is because anytime central bankers invert yield curves and money curves what they do is they constrict the creation of credit in a debt-based economy you need a constant supply of new credit not only to hit your growth targets but to pay on all the existing debt so when there starts to be a shortage of currency in the system well you start to see things like the dollar go up in value as demand for it remains strong and people still need it but will a cut in the funds rate fix things well the answer is no because we can look at this chart here of commercial industrial lending this is a weekly data that's shown on a year over year rate of change in blue and we've got the federal funds rate overlaid against this so what happens is when central banks invert yield curves and money curves Curves, they start to constrict the creation of credit which you can see here a deceleration in lending already begins then the fed says wait a bit 
We don't want that to happen, so we're going to cut rates, but it's not enough and it's not fast enough. And next thing you know, you see a contraction here. This is where money is destroyed when that blue line is headed underneath the horizontal black line because in our system, the way it works is very simple. New money is created when banks create new loans. Well, when an existing loan is paid off, whether it's through your regular monthly payments or through paying off the entire principal, as principal is paid down, money is removed from the financial system. So as we move forward here, we can see cases where there's already a deceleration in lending before the Fed starts to cut rates and Fed rate cuts did nothing to stop that. Perhaps it did here, we can make the case, perhaps around 1995, the Fed cut rates and it worked, perhaps again around 1999, but going into the dot-com bubble, the Fed aggressively cut rates and it still led to a contraction in lending. We see that happen again in the global financial crisis. We see a big deceleration going the pandemic. Notably, we were likely headed into a global recession then, but now the market says, wait a minute, the dollar's gonna go up because, well, the Fed's not gonna cut as much. The reality is the dollar's going to go up because we're not creating enough new loans. We can see right here, this is roughly just above a 0% year over year rate of change, meaning the banking system isn't creating a whole lot of new loans versus a year ago. And what that means is simply, we're not creating enough money. There's still use of dollars in the system. And that could be a knee jerk reaction. Why we're seeing the dollar go up here in value because in normal conditions, when the global economy is running and global trade is happening, there's a lot of new loans created, new dollars created, and that means we should see a gradual weakening of the dollar over time. So these spikes are something to be concerned about, but doesn't mean the system's failing, not just yet, but in my opinion, it means we're facing a liquidity crisis. And then you start coming back to Russia's move here as they're saying, hey, wait a minute, we need to see the dollar continually weaken. These spikes are bad news for us. We want to replace it. But can they can in time? Unlikely. As Wilson said, the rally was robust, broadening through different sectors of the stock market and driven by central banks easing their monetary policy. He says, quote, that will continue until we get a real shock in the economic front or you get a restriction on the liquidity front. That's the exact point. Either there's some sort of shock to the banking system or it becomes obvious that liquidity is being drained out of the system without enough new money to keep the financial system going. So what we're seeing here is two things going on. The world's starting to say we want to move away from the dollar without any means to do it at a time when there's not even enough dollars in the system to keep the global economy running. And so that puts into a lot of question is the Fed still in the position that it is as a dominant central bank? Well, some people are saying not so much as the world's central banks aren't following the Fed's lead anymore. And this is how it used to be where the Fed would kind of lead policy throughout the world. So does this imply then that other central banks are looking other directions, hopefully maybe moving away from the dollar, looking at what Russia is doing? Well, it doesn't mean that at all, but many people believe it does. And the dollar is still the world's main reserve currency, but it doesn't enjoy the dominant position it once did. The greenback share of global central bank holdings fell from 72% in 2000 to 58% in 2023. And data from the PBOC shows that China now sells a quarter of its trade transactions in yuan, up from zero a little more than a decade ago. And again, this is all about the need for currency and global trade. And so one of the ways we see dollars created is through global trade. So how do central banks get more dollars? Well, it's when you see the global economy humming and growing, they accumulate dollars and then they convert those dollars into US treasuries through our foreign auctions that we do on a monthly basis. That's how the system works. So as we see them holding less and less dollars, it doesn't mean they don't want to. Of course they do. What it implies is the system isn't creating enough dollars and we're on path now to a liquidity crisis. Now consider the situation today. Major economies are in very different places. In the US, the problem for the past two years has been post-pandemic inflation. Meanwhile, Europe has suffered the same affliction made worse by the war in Ukraine, which cut off supplies of cheap Russian gas. And in Japan, high inflation is a good news a sign this anemic economy may be perking up. And yet in China, the problem isn't prices too high, is prices too low. And so the reason the Fed is following here is because the other countries, their central bankers are facing much bigger economic problems. Don't worry when it hits here in shores on the US, don't worry, the Fed's gonna cut in a huge way. In fact, we turn to Bostic, who even is supporting more rate cuts despite the fact that everyone's telling the Fed no more. And Fed's Bostic says the US employment and growth to stay robust. 
Bostick said he projects GDP growth to be about 2% in 2025 as households spend down their savings. I don't agree with you, Bostick, not at all on this one. As growth is on track for about 2.6% this year, maybe that's the case, but consumers don't have any savings left. That's the issue. We go back and look at the personal savings rate against GDP. That's shown on the year-over-year -year rate change. And what we see as consumers save more, GDP growth comes down. So his idea here is consumers are going to spend down their savings. Well, they did that just after 2022 have slowly been increasing their savings rate. You see here going to global financial crisis, what occurred is that consumers save more money and that led to a contraction in the economy. And you see the beginning stages now of this long trend of rising savings. It's going to lead to weaker GDP growth. A robust jobs report and strongly expected inflation reading for September have prompted several policymakers to say the U.S. Central Bank should move at a more incremental pace with future rate cuts. Bostic said last week he was open they leaving rates steady at one of the Fed's two remaining meetings this year if data support that approach. He repeated Tuesday they had penciled in one or more quarter point cuts for this year at last month's meeting, but that the final path for rates would depend on the economy. So what's really going on here is the Fed is cutting rates to allow other central bankers to cut rates. The issue underneath that is the Fed doesn't realize that there is a global dollar shortage going on. That's probably the reason we're seeing a rise in the dollar here, but it's also the reason that Russia and other countries are looking to alternatives, but the problem for them is they don't have the infrastructure. They might have demand for it, but they don't have the infrastructure to make it work. In fact, even China, who's forcing people to use the yuan, was panicked about it because in trade, the last thing you want to do is see your currency plummeting, and that will get people away from your currency in a big way because in trade, what people want number one out of anything is a stable global currency and right now what we're about to find out is there a massive shortage of dollars and we're about to see it plunge the global economy into a deep and protracted recession and with that i'm steve van meter thanks for watching thanks for being fans bye now